what's going on guys so there are some crazy dangers in the prepper world there's things that are dangerous about preppers uh, there's things that we do as preppers that endanger ourselves and this is really not talked about that much and i want to do a quick video here and tell you the biggest things that i've learned the past six or seven or eight years since i've been doing this by the way guys if you like this video if you at any time you're watching this you go man this is kind of cool make sure you please hit like on the video. It does us a huge favor. The reason you probably saw this video is because someone else hit like. And so return that favor, hit like, please. Thank you so much. And also make sure you are subscribed. The channel is growing like crazy. It is super exciting to be uh, doing this and we are doing content every single day for you guys. Okay, so the first thing I wanna say is the biggest danger I think in the whole prepper community is, uh, and I did the video on this before, is the narcissistic preppers on YouTube. Okay, I'm just going to say it straight up. There's a couple of the, the biggest preppers on YouTube, the guys with 700,000, you know, type of followers. Um, they are the type of person I would absolutely never, never trust myself or my family with in a preparedness situation. And it's not because I think they're going to do me wrong. It's because of how they think. Okay. And because they obviously feed off of fear, um, yeah, the, the, this is not going to be the, you know, the type of person that in the military, they would let lead or lead a squadron. They're making, you know, anywhere between 400 and $800 a video. Okay. Maybe, um, you know, three to a hundred to a thousand, depending on, you know, some of their channels and guys, so they're just doing a video every single day, just going to ching, to ching, to ching. And guys, they have realized that they get the views and they can get tens of thousands of people to watch that video um, of people who just, they're dialed into fear porn. Okay. What we call fear porn, which is just addicted to fear. People who just want to know every little thing and they're just tweaked out about everything. Um, and here's the thing guys. Okay. When they say something like, yes, hundred percent true that somewhere along the lines of the 35,000 kind of prophecies or this guy's going this way. This guy's going to kill this guy. That's going to happen because that happened over here. It's going to happen over here. And, and this absolutely will happen. And that absolutely will happen. And they're, they're talking all these absolutes. No doubt because they're covering so much ground, something they say is going to happen. They're, they're just covering too much ground. This guys, if you ever study cults, okay, there's a book out there called uh, the, uh, uh, the world of cults. Um, and there's, there's a couple uh, of uh, the kingdom of cults is another big one. Um, if you ever study cults, which I have before, um, th this is how these people talk, okay? That they say so much, sooner or later, what they're going, what they're saying is, it, you know, something has to come true, <laughs> you know, they're saying so much. Um, but, but a key sign that somebody is kind of creating a cult-like following um, is they, they want, they desire, and they need the worst scenario to happen. And when you hear that, that's how you know, just be careful. Another really dangerous thing that I have found in the prepper world is people don't know what to stockpile. They're, they have absolutely, like they hear there's so much content and it's just, it's scatterbrained everywhere, guys. It's just like, you know, this and that and can this and, and you know, a knife and a butter knife, and, you know, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's all kinds of stuff, okay? We simplified it down into a complete preparedness guide. Um, and this isn't just like, you know, you, you need, like I've seen these complete guides, so to speak. And, those, and a lot of those guides are actually really good. I think they're, they're, they're really nice. But what I think is not been clear or what I hadn't found on the internet was like, dude, tell me the most basic of basic ways to have a complete kit that's, that's food related. <laughs> Starts with food, okay? Dude, I can have all these sick knives and axes and bug out bags, blah, blah, blah. If I die from food and water, who cares? Okay, see what I'm saying? Like, or, or like, you know, people telling you to get, you know, tuna fish and all this other stuff. And oh yeah, get a couple of those. And you want to be buying extra of those and you want to have, you know, double pairs of socks and all, but you're going to die off water in three days. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, like, like there's, there's no continuity in, in a complete, easy to understand plan. And that's why we put this together. Um, so check that out. But I think that simplicity and stockpiling is, is go, people are going to find out if something ever bad does happen, God, God forbid, but if something really bad happens, they are going to find out 
their preps were ex- way too complicated that they blew 50 to 80% of their money on stuff that they didn't actually need. Because if you can't survive, you know, if you've got, I mean, I know guys putting stuff in Mylar bags, okay, that'll last 25 years when it's like, dude, you're going to die from not having Tylenol, Tylenol in two months. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Like, you need to think of preparations like that, okay? Like, you, or you may die, die of, of heat exhaustion because you live in a desert, you know what I'm saying? And, and, you, and you should get, you know, a solar paneled air conditioning kit or fans or things like that. Or, you know, I know guys with, you know, a thousand canned things of, of, of cans, but, you know, the first person who knocks on their door with a gun is going to take all their cans. Okay. Like you see what I'm saying? Like, like you gotta have, you gotta simplify what you're doing. You gotta stop listening to all the noise and you, you've got to get a list and, and just start knocking things off that list. So when you prepare like that, um, it's going to give you a better chance of, of well-rounded survival than just shotgun spray approach of just going out there and going crazy. So I think that, you know, the unsimplified stockpiling is, and the just there's not really a lot of logical in business. We would say there's just no strategy. You know, there's, there's no real strategy. It's just all tactics. There's no strategy. I'm telling you, that's going to get a lot of people killed if something happens. Um, another one, um, <clears throat> not practicing. Okay, so this one's a lot harder. But um, but I will tell you. Um, so when I used to live in the city, um, I would practice how to make fires in my backyard. And then I started teaching my kids how to make fires in the backyard. So it would be a night and I, I was teaching my kids like how to use a ferro rod to strike, strike sparks. And like my neighbors were looking at us like, dude, what the hell are they doing back there? What do they think? Like, we're friggin', are they building Noah's Ark back there? <laughs> you know? And, um, but I didn't care. Right. And my kids were having fun. They were learning. They thought it was the coolest thing. We were building fires, learning fires and fast things. So it doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter if you're in an apartment or whatever, you know, go outside, go to the park, go to the state park, um, you know, um, uh, go, go, go out and, uh, you know, learn these things and practice. Okay. Uh, so the time to learn how to clear clean water is not when you're in, in desperate need. Okay. So, um, so I would, you know, tr- you know, push yourself to every month or every week or every weekend, do something that deals with prep. Okay. Like when we, me and my kids, we're building a fort out on the side of my house in the woods, about maybe 40 yards in the woods. And, um, man, I had to like religiously for months force myself to go out there. And there were times when I'm like working until seven, eight o'clock on stuff on the, on the computer or whatever. And I would go out there and I would be out there till like one in the morning in, in the dark, you know, with a headlamp. But I'm, you know, I got two fires going and I'm building stuff and I'm building a teepee and I'm, I'm you know, building a fence or I'm d- building a something for the kids out there. You, you know what I'm saying? But I'm out there and I'm learning and I'm pushing myself in the elements. Um, and so anyway, uh, you know, people not practicing is going to be extremely dangerous for them if anything were to go wrong. Uh, another really big thing that I think people don't talk about and there's just no videos on is being addicted to stuff. It, that, I'm telling you guys, that is going to get you killed. If you have people in your party that are addicted to stuff, that is extremely dangerous, okay? There was somebody who wanted to know where I lived and wanted to know about preps and stuff, and I will not tell them where I live, and I do not, want, I will not let them anywhere near my ranch or my house, and the reason I won't is because they're addicted to marijuana. Now, I, I'm not trying to make a judgment on marijuana. I know it's like the new cool thing that everyone say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm down with marijuana. Well, I, I, I'm not saying it either way, okay? I have friends, business partners that smoke weed, whatever, okay? Um, but I'm just saying this. In terms of a disaster scenario, do I want somebody who needs to smoke weed every day to be in my party? Hell to the no, I don't. Okay. And um, because where are they going to get it? You know what I'm saying? And people who are addicted to substances, um, what are they willing to exchange or what limits will they go to or who will they hang out with or, or, you know, uh, and if they're in a compromised mental state, like, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, you know, oh yeah, I'm just going to go over with the neighbors. Well, yeah, after you've smoked a little bit, you're going to start getting a little loose lipped about what we got going on over here or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. So, um, so, but, but it's not just, it's not just drugs. It's alcohol, it's medications, it's, uh, cigarettes, it's all those kind of things. I'm telling you guys. Okay. And I know a lot of you out there going, oh man, that's me. 
don't feel bad. Okay. But I'm telling you work on it. Seriously work on it. You might be like, Oh man, my anxiety, whatever. Well, I'm telling you work on it. Okay. <laughs> Figure it out, work on it. Um, because, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I don't know. So, um, and I think when it, when it comes to, you know, addictions as well, another thing that's kind of tied into that conversation, my, my thought process here is not just about drugs, but it's medical devices or medicine or tech being addicted to technology. Okay. Um, so for instance, um, there are some people they don't realize yet. Okay. Cause when nine 11 happened, there wasn't no smartphone. Okay. If, if, if the Russians attack the power grid in Dallas, okay, and my ex wants to call um, me and figure out where I live because she has not taken the time to print out a map like I told her to, uh, let me tell you something, you ain't figured out where I live because the cell phone network ain't going to work, the GPS navigation on your phone ain't going to work, your printer ain't going to work, the internet ain't going to work, you're screwed. You know what I'm saying? And so all this time I've been saying, you better print that stuff out now. You better be prepared. See what I'm saying? Like we are so addicted to our phone and to technology and GPS and stuff like that. You just think, oh, well, I'll just send a text message real quick before this grid goes down. No, no, no. By the time it goes down, if it ever does, God forbid it does. But if it does, the, all those thoughts are done. <laughs> okay. All those thoughts are done. You better have a communication plan, all that stuff. And all that stuff, by the way, we go through in the complete preparedness guide, which there'll be a link to it here in this video, guys. So anyway, um, oh, the last thing I want to say on this is also, um, you know, people are used to the internet or their phone or Siri or whatever, uh, telling them everything, their brain, like 50% of their brain knowledge is tied up in the internet or Google, right? Right. Google it or whatever. Um, guys, if you're a serious prepper, you need to have books. Okay. Because for you to know how medicine works, how to, how to heal a wound, how to get rid of allergies, what kind of plants can you eat in your city or your state or your town? Uh, you know what I'm saying? For, for, for you to know, like, I don't, I, I don't know how to trap animals. I, I, I really kind of suck at it. Like, I'm okay at, like, raccoons and stuff. But most, most I, I don't have two craps of a clue how to, snare an, how to snare an animal. But I can tell you, I have snares and I have books on it. And that is a mile and a half further or that that is like you have to understand okay when when things go primitive having a book and a snare is like 200 years ahead than the person who doesn't you're 200 years of knowledge and technology ahead of the person who doesn't the chances of you figuring out how to build a snare and snare somebody in your lifetime if you don't have that technology or the knowledge is pretty much zero unless you're Thomas Edison or, you know what I'm saying? So literally the chances of you discovering that is, is zero. It's a statistical zero in statistics, statistics class. Okay. So books and those kind of things are going to put you way ahead guys. So guys think about what I said here. I'm telling you, there's a lot of dangers in prepping. These are the biggest ones I can think of. And the ones that I wanted to share with you, to make sure that you uh, are prepared. So thanks for hanging out. I'll be with you guys every single day until the internet goes out. Talk soon.